Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Stephen. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We acknowledge that this building, a holy place within Mianjin, Brisbane, is built on country of the First Nations people of Australia. We pay our respects to elders, past, present, and emerging, and we acknowledge the people's customs and, spirit and spirituality of those who have been custodians of this land for over 60,000 years. To enable you to participate fully in the Mass, a copy of the weekly newsletter is available on entry at each of the doors. Please ensure that all mobile phones are turned off or switched to silent and that personal possessions are always kept on you. Parents are reminded that children should always be accompanied by an adult. Out of respect for our congregation and for privacy reasons, it is requested that no individual photos or videos are taken during this Mass. Today's Mass is being live streamed. Our celebrant today is the Archbishop.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. On this which is his day, the day of the resurrection, the risen Christ himself stands among us. To his word we listen, to his feast we come, and we do so as those who are wounded by sin. But in him we find the healing of mercy, our healing unto eternal life. So let's greet the Lord Jesus, first born from the dead, as he greets us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law, upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Lord 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ will be glorified in my body, whether by my life or by my death. Life to me, of course, is Christ, but then death would bring me something more. But then again, if living in this body means doing work which is having good results, I do not know what I should choose. I am caught in a dilemma, this dilemma. I want to be gone and be with Christ, which would be very much the better. But for me to stay alive in this body is a more urgent need for your sake. Avoid anything in your everyday lives that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour, and again at the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then, at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more standing round, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the 11th hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. Those who came last, they said, have done only one hour, and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree for one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do as I wish with my own? 
Why be envious? Because I am generous. Thus, the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. My ways are not your ways, my thoughts not your thoughts. That's at least what God says to us this morning through the prophet Isaiah. And it's true that the ways and the thoughts of God can be vastly different from the ways and the thoughts of the world, even of you and me. And the great challenge of any human life is to bring our ways and thoughts into harmony, not conflict with the ways and the thoughts of God. But what is true between God and us, that our ways and thoughts are different, is also true between human being and human being. Because I look around this Sunday gathering and I am quite certain that the ways and thoughts of each of you is in some ways very different from the ways and thoughts that might be mine. And this is supremely true of human cultures, and there are quite a few human cultures represented in this gathering. And particularly as the ethnic profile of the Catholic community in Australia, and certainly in this diocese, changes almost by the day. Many of you were born elsewhere. You come from cultures that have other ways and other thoughts. That can create problems, but it can certainly create possibilities as well. And our task is to minimize the problems and maximize the possibilities. So I ask, what are the ways and the thoughts of God? And I ask this question on this day, which is the World Day of Migrants and Refugees. The Pope has just been in Marseille, the south of France, meeting with all the bishops of the Mediterranean world to talk about the crisis of migration in the Mediterranean world where the Mediterranean Sea is becoming a great cemetery as thousands upon thousands of refugees make their way or seek to make their way across the Mediterranean Sea from Africa into Europe. And if they make it at all, they are treated in the most abominable way. And it's reached a point of crisis in that part of the world, but many other parts of the world too. This is a, a moment in which there are convulsive movements of peoples around the globe. And it's within that context that I ask, what are God's ways? What are God's thoughts? The real God, not the tin pot false gods who will always drive us apart, who will always exclude, always take us into one kind of slavery or another. The real God includes everybody, not just some, not just the privileged, but in fact, if there is any privilege for this God, it belongs to those who are excluded, shut out. 
And you see, those thoughts and ways of exclusion are in fact the ways of the world. This country has been not untainted by this. So the ways and the thoughts of the world may be exclusion, but the ways and the thoughts of God are inclusion, and you can underline that. And here are we, the Church, being called to make sure that our ways and thoughts are in harmony with God's ways and thoughts. So a church that excludes is a contradiction in terms, is slave to the world, not servant of God. So we seek, seek to bring the two together in recognition that every, hum, every human being, not just my mob or my tribe, but every human being in fact is my sister, my brother, my flesh and blood, not the other, but one of mine, every one of them. And again, I say this on this World Day of Migrants and Refugees, thinking in a particular way as we move on the journey of the referendum of our own Indigenous peoples who have become refugees in their own country. The bitter irony of that. So in such a moment, we hear the call through the prophet to us, the Church, here in this time and in this place. St Paul says, avoid anything that would be unworthy of the gospel of Christ. It's hard to think of anything that would be less worthy or more unworthy of the gospel of Christ than the exclusion of other human beings, treating them as not just the other, but the outsider to be cast into some nether darkness, unworthy of the gospel of Christ. Paul also says, life to me is Christ. Words which were in fact taken as his Episcopal motto by Archbishop Frank Rush, one of my predecessors who lies in the vault of this cathedral. It is true that for the Christians, for the church, life is Christ. Outside him, there's just the death. But what that actually means varies from person to person and culture to culture. And again, that diversity isn't a problem, it's a possibility. It's a source of enormous richness, creating the great symphony of faith in him, that symphony of faith that we call the church, us, here this morning. Christ belongs to all, not to some. And when I say all, I don't just mean all in the church. Christ belongs to every human being. Christ is God's supreme gift to every human being on the face of the planet. And our task is to offer the gift that is in him, the gift of radical inclusion, the gift that comes from God through us, into a world that works according to the ways and the thoughts of hell. In listening to the gospel that we have heard, we understand that for this God, the real God, the one who seems overlooked, in fact, isn't overlooked at all. Consider these day labourers. You see this sort of thing still in the Middle East. Men who appear at the start of each day, hiring themselves out. They need to be hired in order to feed their family. The stakes are fairly high. And we hear the story of some who are hired at the start of the day. Others are hired in the middle of the day, and others right at the end of the day, it seems. But then, and this is the strangeness and the wonder of the real God, those who only came at the end receive the same wage, which seems, seems odd, even unjust, as those who come first say. But they're paid the same wage because the waiting is the work. Here they are, waiting in the wings all day, with a growing sense of anxiety, will I be able to feed the family or not? 
And then finally, at the end of the day, they are hired, expecting to get a pittance, but their waiting has been their work, as it so often is in the Christian life. In other words, they seemed to be overlooked, but they weren't overlooked at all. They were always part of the story. And so too are we and so too are those who seem most excluded and overlooked. And this is the story not just of us or of the human race on this little planet, but it is the story of God that never ends. The story of the real God who welcomes everyone who pays everyone the same wage, calls us my friend, and not just us, but everyone. The God who says, why be envious? Because I am generous. So what we celebrate here today is the generosity of a God, which in fact is endless. Let's give voice to the faith that makes us one. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are those who put our faith in the endless generosity of God, the God who understands what it is to be human and who befriends the human race. Let's pray now in the power of faith. For Pope Francis and the Church, that they will be granted the grace and strength to continue to be a conscience to the world in bringing about peace among nations and respect for God's creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we ask you here our prayer. For all Australians.
Australians that today's World Day of Refugees and Migrants will remind us that freedom and justice are owed to everyone as a basic human right and that we will always share this land in a spirit of welcome and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we ask you hear our prayer. For the people of Libya and Morocco, suffering devastation and great loss of life from the recent natural disasters, that their plight will prompt the world community to come to their relief with emergency and long-term aid. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you to hear our prayer. For Jewish people observing their most sacred day, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, at this time, that they will be renewed in their faithfulness to God's ancient covenant. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we ask you to hear our prayer. For youth workers, community leaders, and the police, that they will be blessed in their collective efforts to guide young people away from anti-social behaviors and crime towards a life of purpose and hopefulness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we ask you to hear our prayer. For those who have died recently and those whose anniversary of death occurs around this time, that they will share to the full in the glory of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord we ask you to hear our prayer. We place our faith, Lord God, in your generosity. Listen to us now and answer us for the sake of Jesus, your Son, who is the Lord for ever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Pray for the Lord in his name, for our good and all his whole church. Receive with favour, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. As without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, our Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, <clears throat> pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Tim, my assistant bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, our merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Raise up, O oh Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the God who is peace bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.